welcome everyone to this lecture on the chapter of laws of motion uh, so in the last lecture we were looking at the idea of constraint relations uh, that uh, how do we you know, judge the motion of two blocks which are connected by a string when there are multiple pulleys involved how do we calculate instantaneous power and uh, then then so on so let us uh, solve the questions which we discussed in the last video so there were two pulleys which were drawn like this uh, and they were connected by, uh, by strings in this way and there were two blocks so what we did was uh, we calculated that what is the relation of acceleration of block A and B. So let's say acceleration of block A is in some downward direction. This block B has some acceleration in upward direction. So what is the relation of accelerations of A and B that we calculated? So uh, today which we are, we are going to start with solving uh, the equations, uh, the force equations of both the blocks that is A and B. So let us start with block A. So block A has two force on it, the gravitational force Mag and the upward force that is tension. Uh, the tension force acting on the block number 2 uh, would be 2T. As for this pulley, the upward force acting on, is, on it is tension T and tension T and the downward force acting is 2T. So in this particular string, in this string, the tension would be equal to 2T which would be acting on block of mass B in upward direction. The gravitational force on mass B is mbg. So for block A, the equation would be written as mag minus tension T is equal to ma into acceleration of block A. Similarly, for block B, would be writing um, mass of block B into g, that is the gravitational force. But we will be taking the gravitational force negative. Upward direction will be taken as positive plus 2t the upward force is equal to mass of the block B into acceleration of the block which is T. Uh, now additionally we uh, we calculated the equation uh, acceleration of block A is uh, Two times the acceleration of block B. Yeah, the relation was the acceleration of block A is two times the acceleration of block B. So this is what we uh, did in the last video that uh, we had to find this relation, and this relation helps us solving helps us in solving for these values acceleration of A, acceleration of B, because we have this equation equation number let's say one. This and this equation, equation number two. So these two equations have three variables. That is the acceleration of A, acceleration of B, and the tension. So these equations uh, are two in number, but have three variables. So they cannot be used to solve these variables. So we needed an additional equation, which was given by the constant relation one one. So we uh, calculated that one. Well, let us see. Uh, how do we proceed? So, the mass of the block B, uh, we will be multiplying the equation number 1 by 2. So, it get 2 mag minus 2t is equal to 2 times the mass of acceleration A into A. Then, we get 2t minus mb into g is equal to mass of B into acceleration of P. So, uh, when we will be adding these two equations, equation number 1 and equation number 2, we will get 2 times mass of acceleration, mass of A minus mass of B into G is equal to 2 times mass of A. So, let us try to find mass of A first. So, mass of B, we know the mass of B can be written as 2 times 
the mass of A plus mass of B. The mass of B uh, has a coefficient of acceleration of the AB. AB is AA by 2. So this would come out to be MB upon 2 into acceleration of A. So once we'll replace acceleration of A, it would be uh, acceleration of B, it would be acceleration of A by 2, uh, which would get into common. So from this equation, uh, we get acceleration of A is equal to 2 times mass of A minus mass of B divided by 2 times mass of A plus mass of B divided by 2 into actual gravity G. So this would be the acceleration of block A. So let us move ahead. Similarly, we can find acceleration of block A. It would be simply half of this value. So this is how we approach the question of constraint relation. First, we find the constraint relation, uh, which is uh, basically this equation. And then we write the laws, the force equations, the uh, basically draw the FBD and draw, uh, write the force equations. And then we solve everything. Okay. So let us do the next question. So uh, for this figure, for the next question, we have a figure, figure B. So we have to find the constraint relation for masses M1, M2, and M3. So let us just draw it quickly. So there we have a pulley. So basically we have three pulleys, two are fixed to the ceiling and one is movable. The masses which we have is M1, M2 and M3 and we have selected that mass M2 has an acceleration A2 in upward direction, mass M1 has an acceleration A1 in downward direction and similar case for mass M3 has an acceleration in downward direction. A tension acting on the pulley is T, tension T, tension T. <coughs> and tension t. So let us apply the constraint relation. <coughs> so uh, tension has to be multiplied with velocity. Do you know that tension is to be multiplied with velocity of mass m1 to get uh, the instantaneous power? But we knew that okay, after differentiating the velocity we straight up got the acceleration and the relation uh, stay, uh, remains the same when we are changing from acceleration a1 to the velocity v1. So we can multiply directly tension with acceleration and we will get the same relation. So let us start. Uh, <coughs> tension into acceleration a1. So we will be starting from this point. This is the first point of contact. Tension is in upward direction, acceleration in downward direction. So we will get a negative sign. These two points, points number 1 and 2 are not moving at all. So these two points are not moving, so tension into zero, tension into zero. At this point, this point has an acceleration uh, same as that of the block, which is A2. So we we'll write T into A2 and one more T into A2. Then these two points, again, these two points <coughs> have no acceleration uh, whatsoever. So again, T into zero, T into zero. And for the third point, we will again write minus T into A3. And sum of all these instantaneous power should come to be zero. That was the principle which we are using that the total power transferred by string on all the bodies connected to it when summed should be come out to be zero. So we would get a1 minus a1 minus a3 plus 2a2 plus 2a2 is equal to zero. And this implies that A2 is equal to A1 plus A3 divided by 2. So this is the relation which we wanted. Constraint relation for uh, this particular figure. So uh, let us jump to the next question. Question number 1. For figure B, 
write the force equations of the three blocks that is what are the forces acting on m1 m2 and m3 and find the magnitude of accessions 1 2 and 3 so basically what we did in the last question we have to do again so in the last question uh, we knew the constant relation and we wrote the force equations and we solved it so we have to do same again except that there are three variables three accessions now and the fourth variable is tension so let us write the equations first so mass m1 um, for mass m1 uh, the equations would be m1g minus tension is equal to m1 into a1 for mass m2 the equation would be 2t minus m2g is equal to m2 into a2 and for mass third uh, the equation would be similar to mass 1 that is would be m3g minus t is equal to m3 into a3 so the equations which we have are let's mark this as 1 equation 2 equation 3 and equation 4 and let us zoom out so that we can get some more space to solve so uh, now we have four equations and we have to evaluate these variables basically a1 a2 a3 so what we can do is that first we can add these four three equations two three and four so once we'll be adding them we'll get m1g uh, plus m3g minus m2g is equal to m1 a1 plus m2 a2 plus m3 a3 so this is the equation which we got and we can reduce this further m1 plus m3 minus m2 is equal to m1 a1 plus m2 a2 plus m3 a3 so uh, now what we can do is that uh, let us try to eliminate a3 from this equation so we want to eliminate a3 let us use the equation number one so from equation number one we can write uh, a3 is equal to 2a2 minus a1 so the, let us say this is equation number four and let us uh, try to eliminate more variables so uh, let's say let us reuse the equations 2 and 3 let us use the equations 2 and 3 and uh, uh, eliminate the technician so we would get uh, 2 times m1g minus m2g is equal to 2 times m1 a1 plus m2 a2 so we would get can we write the equation or uh, can we uh, write a1 from this equation so yes we can we can do 2 m1 minus m2 into g uh, minus m2 a2 divided by 2 m1 that should be equal to a1 so this is how we get a1 So uh, our objective is to eliminate a1 and a3 from this equation so that we can get a2. So we will write m1g m1 plus m3 minus m2 into g is equal to m1 into a1 so a1 we can eliminate directly from this equation using this equation we can eliminate so uh, we have multiplied uh, 2 with the equation number 2 so that gave us 2 m1 2 m1 and that gave us 2 m1 a1 and then we subtracted m2 a2 from the lhs of the equation 
so that way we got this equation so that would come out to be m1 into 2 m1 minus m2 into g minus m2 a2 divided by 2 m1 so that is our value of a1 um, so we have written this uh, this part of the equation so m1 gets cancelled out m1 will be cancelled out plus m2 into a2 that we don't have to eliminate we are looking for a2 first plus m3 into a3 again we will have to use equation number 4 to eliminate a3 so that would come out to be 2 times a2 minus a1 so that would be this whole equation again so uh, what we can write is that m1 plus m3 minus m2 into g and let us say m1 is not cancelled out let us say this whole value is a1 up till now so we can combine this value and this value so this is what we are, uh, we are supposed to focus at this value was a1 right now we uh, uh, tried to solve uh, further and we substitute the value of a1 but we are seeing that instead of substituting a1 twice we can substitute it, substitute it once only what we will be doing is that we will be taking m1 and m3 common and then we will be substituting the value of a2 and that would be a convenient way also so uh, we are taking the values of m m2 a2 and m3 common we will get m2 plus uh, 2 m3 into a2 and then we will write a1 so a1 will be written as m1 minus m3 and then we will be substituting the value of a1 so we will get m1 plus m3 minus m2 into g is equal to m2 plus 2m3 into a2 plus 2m1 minus m2 into g minus m2 into a2 divided by 2m1 and that whole quantity is multiplied by m1 minus m3 so let us this let us multiply this by m1 minus m3 change this to uh, a multiplication sign and add this to rhs of the equation Okay, so we will get, <clears throat> from this we can find the value of A2, so we will write M1 plus M3 minus M2 into G M1 plus M3 minus m2 into g that is equal to so let us write this whole quantity over here all m1 plus m3 minus m2 into g that whole value Uh, now we can take a2 common here so if we'll take the value of a2 common we'll get m2 plus 2 m3 so that means we are done with this part one good way of writing the equation is just taking the equation or uh, taking the part of the equation which you are done with so we are done with this part and uh, we are writing a2 so we will be supposed to write this value so that would be plus uh, m2 m3 
minus m1 m2 divided by m1 and uh, 2 divided by 2 m1 so this would be multiplied with a2 and then we'll add m1 minus m3 into 2 m1 minus m2 divided by 2 m1 into g so uh, from this we'll get the complete value uh, which would be m1 plus m3 minus m2 minus um, m1 minus m3 into 2 m1 minus m2 divided by 2 m1 into g is equal to or divided by m2 plus m3 into 2 m3 into 2 plus m2 m3 divided by 2 m1 subtracting m2 by 2 so we'll be subtracting m2 by 2 um, so that would come out to be simply m2 by 2 so this value so this whole value is equal to a2 similarly we can find a1 and a3 so as you can see uh, the questions in constraint relations they go pretty long the calculations can go pretty big pretty wide uh, in a few steps only so this again can be judged by the idea that how many equations which we have and how many variables which we have so if we have four equations and four variables and uh, now all the constants were not known that is mass m1 m2 m3 are not known if they are known these values are substituted and the equations they tend to grow a bit smaller but since all the constants are unknown so that's why the equation uh, it grows in size and it, digs, and it looks like this so this is the whole value of the acceleration which we uh, calculated so uh, this is the acceleration of block number two uh, to find the acceleration of block number 1, we will be substituting A2 in some equation to get A1 and then we will get the value of A3. So for uh, this particular video, we will be uh, completing uh, up to this point only since this is a very big question and from the next video, we will be starting with uh, more questions from the constant relations. So thank you for joining. Have a nice day.